Marco. Sean. Do you uh, do you have your swimmy floaty things ready? Swimmy floaty? We're going to the beach. You know those little those little arm things you blow up so you don't uh, yeah. don't sink underwater. Yeah. Yeah, I need those actually. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> a good good. swimmer. I'm not. I'm it's not a solid. Long, <laughs> it's a long swim across the Atlantic. Oh, <laughs> that! I thought we were gonna yeah, go down here good. in Santa Monica on the beach or uh, something. No, Santa Monica Beach is nice too, but not yeah. not quite as adventurous as uh, crossing <laughs> the Atlantic. Challenging. To, uh, <laughs> that's not challenging. Or nor challenging. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> there's there's a little bit of risk there as well. I would imagine uh, crossing the Atlantic. Sharks. But just with just floaties on <laughs> yes well, well why are we going to why are we going to uh to england that's the question to london well i'm going to london first of all because i'd love to go to london and i was just waiting for an excuse to go back after a few years and i think a lot of people done uh, less travel during these past years but thankfully things are looking much much better nowadays so why not to go back to our old uh traditions and that is covering interesting cybersecurity conference around the world and yeah just give me an excuse to go to london sean i know i know we i, I felt we and we should introduce our guests but uh, very quickly i felt we we had like an amazing event in 2019 in info security europe and uh, like a new world was emerging for us as a publication joining forces uh with the team there in, in London, and uh, then things halted. <laughs> so I'm excited to, to get back in the groove, but I also understand that there is a lot new with Infosecurity Europe this year, and uh, I'm thrilled to introduce uh, Nicole Mills and Julia Clark from the team there, putting this amazing event together. Thank you both for joining us today and, and for being patient sitting as Marco and I kind of ramble on about two days left. <laughs> Thank you both. It's great to be speaking to you again. It's been it's been a and while. We, you you while. brought a new friend with you, which we never I spoke know. with before. So maybe maybe we start with a little introduction about you, Nicole, and then you can uh, maybe help uh, and introduce Julia and or pass the ball, and she can introduce herself. Yeah, perfect. So I am Nicole Mills, obviously. I'm the exhibition director for the Infosecurity Group, which is made up of our amazing show, Infosecurity Europe, but also Infosecurity Magazine as well. So we're trying to talk to our community all year round. Um, I have been on the show just over seven years now um, with the magazine as well for that amount of time. Um, and we have watched the market and industry change quite considerably, and we've been changing alongside that as well. So, yeah, I think that's me in a nutshell, and I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Julia, who's joined me today, because there's always power in the numbers, right? Hi, everyone. I'm Julia Clark. I'm the Group Marketing Manager for InfoSec, and I joined uh, about six months ago. And I come from a long way away, so I'd need a few floaties to get me here. So I'm originally from New Zealand. Um, so I've been working in events across New Zealand, Australia, France, and, and now in the UK. So I'm really excited to, to be part of InfoSecurity Europe and InfoSecurity Magazine and bringing uh, 2023 to our amazing audience. I love well, it. Well, that's exciting. Actually, yeah. I want to go there because I love New Zealand. I mean, I want to go there. I've been there. <laughs> what brought you all the way here? <laughs> I mean, there. Ah, so I'm kind of playing geography yeah, here. Yeah, here, I'm here, there. Yeah, I married an Englishman. Oh, okay. So I married okay. an Englishman. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're, so we met in New Zealand and, and here we are with our, our two little half Kiwi, half English children. <laughs> it's a small world, Sean. It's a small yeah. world. It is, a, it is a small world. I have yet to travel to New Zealand. I'll have to do that. Uh, maybe double floaties for that journey. But um, let's talk about InfoSecurity Europe. And, and Nicole, we had the opportunity to, to catch up with you on our day three recap. It's a three-day event, right? Uh, still three days. Yeah, it is still three uh, days. Tuesday yeah. to Thursday this year, the 
20th to the 22nd. And uh, so that's the same. But where we meet this time is going to be different. Tell us a little bit about uh, where, where the location is this year. Yeah, so the location this year is at London XL, uh, which is over in the Docklands, the east end um, of London. So previously we were on the west uh, side of London um, and we moved actually last year over to XL with a really smooth transition and amazing support from the community with our move. Um, so, yeah, it's all worked out really well and it's enabled us to do a few different things. But as ever, we're constantly looking at evolving and changing each year. So that is that has been a big change for us. Um, and we will continue to sort of like bed in with our new venue this year as well. And the I mean, the agenda is pretty incredible. Uh, let's see, there, there's keynote stages, inside stages, Geek Street, Startup Showcase, Strategy Talks. I mean, the list goes on. Yeah. I mean, if I did the math correctly, 168 sessions and workshops and, and other things covering leadership, strategy, tech, innovation, insights. I don't know. what Are there any highlights you can give us uh, to, to kind of set the stage for what people can expect this year? You're right, there's close to nearly 200 sessions this year and the conference programme, the content and conference programme has always been a, a big part of what we do um, on Infosecurity Europe because it's really something that our audience has always wanted to do, both from a, like a visitor perspective and the exhibitors too. So the exhibitors want to sort of share their sort of skills, their thought leadership, uh, and many of the theatres are actually dedicated to the exhibitors and the vendors within the market to enable them to do that. And the visitors, you know, are always talking around like learning uh, within the industry. And again, we sort of try to sort of bring everybody together to meet those needs. But in terms of highlights, um, you know, we do try and cover the sort of spectrum from like the technical side over to the strategic side and all the different different theatres. So there are seven dedicated theatres across the show floor. Um, and we do have like specific theatres looking at what's new and interesting coming into the market. That's just a really key part of the InfoSec community, constantly looking out for what's new and interesting coming into the market. Um, and so those are catered for in our discovery zone, our innovation zone um, and our startup. And they all have their own sort of uh, dedicated theatres that sort of go around there. Uh, you know, one of the big highlights, and maybe Julia wants to talk a little bit about this, is on our keynote stage and some of the stellar sort of uh, keynote speakers that we've got. Yeah, we've worked really hard this year with our um, our keynote speakers, and um, I think this is really exciting for me um, in terms of, of, of marketing and in terms of really... Um, appealing to our audience so i mean nicole's spoken a lot about that some of the the cyber related talks that we've got um but our first keynote and um, speaker is michael johnson uh, so olympic um medalist um and he has got such an inspiring talk about his journey through um through both running and he's overcome um a stroke and and his challenges and just to help how teams can really move forward through adversity and all the challenges and work together. Um, and then on the uh, Wednesday, we have Matthew Saeed, who is um, a author. He's um, got some fantastic books about rebel ideas and black box thinking. And then on day three, we've got Karen Alazari, who is friendly hacker and is a security specialist and so we've got a really really strong lineup of keynotes um off the back of um some really really strong industry specialists as well well that's exciting and i uh, i'm just imagine this new place much larger you describe multiple stage i feel like it's a coachella event like people can choose their talk i'm sure many overlap so we usually suggest 
to the attendees to make a good plan. And maybe you'll have some advice for mm -hmm. people coming there uh, towards the end. But from a marketing perspective, I, I want to stay here with Julia because I'm really into branding and marketing myself. And giving this picture when we talk to people about uh, info security, cybersecurity event, a lot of people roll their eyes and I'm like, ah, such an industry thing, like, you geek going there, at least talking about cybersecurity. But as you're just telling us, there is athletes, there is, uh, you know, riders, there is people that are part of our society because cybersecurity has become part of our society. It's not in the, in the tech room anymore. So maybe what has been your contribution and what is your vision maybe as a marketing person to create these events that are much more inclusive, not just for diversity, but for a larger audience. Yeah, I think um so when I came into InfoSecurity, we really wanted to have a look at the brand and think about really who we are as a brand and, and who our audience are. And um we talk about the you know everyone and everything in um info security. And so I wanted to take that and sort of amplify it. And so we, um, this year, our, our sort of brand position is about rethinking the power of info security. And I think it comes back to that. We're not just, info security isn't just a tech solution. It's, a, it's about being, a, it's about a culture. And so the, the, everything about info security this year it is obviously about info security and cyber security, but it's also about bringing that community together it is about the diversity. We, you know, we have women, women in cyber. We have, you know, as I said, speakers like Michael Johnson. We have networking. We have like a gaming zone. And so everything uh, in terms of the branding is about our community. So it's not just about the tech side of it. It's about who, who our people are and what they want to get out of a three-day event. Yeah, and I think... Let's talk a little bit about that, what what people want to get out of it. I mean, what Marco would go for and try to extract would be very different from what I would go for and try to extract. Me, I'm going to always look at things from an operational perspective. How does what I see and hear fit into my security program? And I'm going to get that from speaking with exhibitors, listening mm. to talks, connecting with the the other attendees to see uh, what, what are some best practices, what are some standards, what are, so how, how do you see people kind of working through the agenda to find the bits and to find the, the people that they want to connect with? Yeah, so, um, I mean, there's multiple ways and, and we have like a really diverse and full agenda. Like you mentioned before, we've got close to 200 um sessions we have got everything from security workshops to to keynote stages to um round tables um and i think we we have a visitor app which i think is absolutely phenomenal for finding your way around for being able to plan what sessions you want to see on what days um where you know where you should be at any given time um, so that that would be my bit of advice is to jump on the visitor app and really get in there and plan those days to make the most out of it so that you can see the exhibitors you want to see and the sessions you want to see and you can network with your peers and and really take full advantage of the whole program. Can you That's describe really cool. the, the, I'm excited difference, for that. the different stages? Can you describe the different stages? I mean, I, I would presume most people know what a keynote stage is. What are, yes. uh, well, let's see, there's, there's like the insight stage. Um, I don't know, maybe describe that one. And Geek Street was another one that, that caught my attention. Yeah, so, um, I mean, firstly, definitely plan your time because you're right, Sean. You just really need to have a look at the program and curate your time. And hopefully there should be something for everyone because that is actually what we're trying to bring under one roof so that's really important the keynote stage uh, most people will be familiar with a headline stage main stage that type of thing 
for us, what the keynote stage is all around is actually having gone out to the market and researched with information security professionals, what their challenges are, what their needs are, and actually extracted from that, like some really key sessions that are gonna be delivered on there. And then with the opening keynotes that we've got with, you know, Matthew Side and Michael Johnson, it's like that relatable experience so that people can sit in the keynote theater and hear like sort of, you know, gold nuggets of information that they can take away from a different industry, different types of people and apply it into their own job. So it's a sort of very sort of inspirational, motivational um, area. The, 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 other, um, the other stages sort of go across like a range of whether you want to discuss your strategy. So actually this is a vendor led theatre, but they've gone in for a call for papers process. So they've been selected as having a highly relevant talk and the mix of talks across the three days by our advisory council. So, you know, a whole huge amount of submissions came in from all the vendors um, and then they've been scored. So, you know, really critical, like the sort of creme de la creme of actually coming into the strategy talks, but all around actually how do you sort of protect and defend uh, your own business. Um, then we have like talking tactics. So the sort of like the key difference between talking tactics is that Again, it's like the, the, you know, the information security vendors uh, using case studies and clients to, to demonstrate actually the work that they have done so that, you know, so that it's not just about their product or their service, but they can, you know, demonstrably sort of showcase, you know, different challenges that they face. And I think for our audience coming in, that's very relatable, actually, because it gives them the sort of trust that actually, you know, whoever we're talking to, we know that they've done this this work before. Geek Street uh, to in the conference program, you know, I want to say it's a relatively new addition, but it isn't because of COVID. So Geek Street was introduced in in sort of 2018, but obviously we've missed a couple of shows in that and um, in that era in that sort of period of time. But it's a really it's our area where we want the you know to be really interactive and bring people on there and give them sort of like the hands-on experience. Um, and one of the exhibitors, Hack the Box, is doing like a capture the flag competition on Geek Street. So people can come along with their laptops, you know, uh, hack the box will take them through the program, they will enable them to engage in it. So, you know, if you're in that aspect of cybersecurity and you're doing, you know, coding and protection, then that's a really relevant area for you. On the other side of Geek Street, we've um, introduced, you know, a bit of fun, a bit of uh, a respite. We're putting like some retro arcade uh, gaming machines in, in there. Um, so yeah, so that, that's going So in. people can hack them or play them? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, play them, so, you know. Um, All right. Yeah, so yes, so to, to play those games, so, you know, creating an immersive experience. And obviously a lot of exhibitors put a huge amount of um, attention and investment in their own stands and they've got lots of interaction, you know, whether it be demos or gamification going on their own stands as, as well. So who, who knows what's going to be in this year's show because we don't always get sight of it until we're on site but last year i think we had three or four f1 cars coming on site uh we had a flash mob like as well like a surprise flash mob that was introduced on site you know we have boats coming along the dock side we will have you know ice cream vans like a whole range of different things trying to bring the sort of community together and provide that sort of networking capability as well wow like i wasn't excited enough about coming in london now you give me yeah. even more you excuses me ice, ice cream truck, <laughs> you ice cream truck. Any, any you ar arcade too arcade too we have a tradition we do. sean and i we love to play uh, the old pinball game so i don't know if there is one of those but you know it's uh, something we like uh, in a yeah, good I old challenge not to hack it. Promise not. <laughs> no no we're not gonna yeah. hack it we're gonna play it what is one of the other things, Marco, that uh, that excites me about this particular event is a view into a market outside of the U.S. Uh, there are a lot mm -hmm. of drivers 
and uh, different mindsets that shape the way organizations run and shape the way they secure their business and their customers' information. And for me, there's going to be a lot of unique conversations and insights and learnings, I think, on, on that front. I don't know if Julia or Nicole, you have any any specific points to add to that, but I mean, it's always fun for me to get different perspectives on, on different things outside of the U.S. Yeah, and different ways of operating, I guess. I mean, we have, you know, we have a number of U.S. exhibitors, you know, really strong contingent of, you know, U U.S. companies coming into the show. We always have done, as well as Israeli companies as well, who are often at the forefront of, you know, development and innovation. So, you know, to go around those, Sean, and, and chat to them and find out what they're, they're doing is really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and another thing that I was reading, and you mentioned Karen Elazari, which we are lucky enough to know. It. We have interviewed her before, and I think she's going to join us on one conversation before before the event. And she talks about the intersection of cyber conflict and politics, which is something it's kind of like in my uh, in my uh, interest when I talk about cybersecurity and society. And so I think that will be very interesting. It, it brings me to again where sean was going with the different view that we may have maybe some priority from one country to another but in the end these are international events where people come from all over the world and the theme julia maybe you can chime on this is rethink the power of info security and that's not just for the UK or for Italy or for the US. So we need to rethink it at a global level. And I think probably Karen conversation and presentation is gonna be about that. But did you find a lot of uh, talk to be focused on these really strong presence of cybersecurity in our society? Was it like a driver, a much more strong uh, topic that you found recurring through the talks? Um, so I've only really had a hand in the in the keynote um, and so I, I, I suppose I can't talk about the the other theatres um, but the way that I wanted well you know we wanted that those keynotes to sort of um, be positioned was not just from a UK standpoint, so very much from a global positioning. So hence we've, we've got Michael Johnson from the US and, and Karen, um, you know, from Israel and, um, and then Matthew Said, who's from the UK and, and bringing a different mindset into cybersecurity. Um, I think Nicole would probably be able to speak more fluently about the other theatres and uh, and then the other speakers. Yeah, Nicole, please. Yeah, so it's um, when we are having conversations with the audiences, which we try and do quite regularly, and we have you know a really supportive cohort of infrastructure professionals who give us some guidance and expertise in terms of what we're bringing together. Um, and very much like, you know, a lot of the conversation is around actually, you know, the power of infrasecurity now is such a, like a boardroom level. So maybe when we met in 2018, 2019, it was most definitely a boardroom topic, but the prominence of it and the importance of it now at a boardroom level and, you know, CEOs being held accountable for it as one of their objectives, their KPIs in terms of performance has, has definitely increased. And it's trying to bring part of what we're doing is trying to sort of articulate that and reflect that in in the sessions about actually you know how how does a professional now navigate around the world of you know having to talk to the board around you know you know cyber security and some of it is you know 
governments and compliance and some of it is incredibly technical right and we're organizers we're not technical people but actually what we're trying to do is bring facilitate the community together and bring all the experts together so that actually everyone can go back into their business and enable you know people like us behind our laptops at our desks to ensure that they're sort of you know you know ensuring that their businesses are a, are a safer place to operate um you know from a cybersecurity perspective and that was part of the theme of like you know rethinking the power of um infrastructurity is like it's its prominence has grown exponentially over the years and actually it's really trying to bring all of those nuances together to have to be able to have clearer conversations. Yeah, and I, I think for me, as we as we uh, start to wrap here, there, there's one one point in in an overview that I read about this. So clearly, technology is at the core of this, right? Technology introduces a risk. Technology hopefully is going to help uh, respond to some of that risk. Um, but you talk about learning from experts and connecting with the industry and your peers and strengthening your skills to make a measurable impact. And I think to me, that's where it all comes together is uh, it's not just going and having an ice cream playing pinball and meeting some folks, but it's actually doing something with this. Right. Of course, we're going to have fun doing that and we'll have fun recording our chats on location as well. But it's, it's all about making that impact to do better for our business, for our customers, for society. And um, so with that, I, I want to leave it to one or the both of you for a call to action. Uh, what, what do you want folks to, to do after they listen to this? Um, how, what's the action for them to, to come and join and, and participate? Come and join the community and, you know, meet with your peers and network with your peers and make it a stronger place for everybody. You know, everyone puts in, like, you know, the exhibitors and our speakers put in a huge amount of effort and um, dedicate a lot of time actually to bringing the show together. And it would just be wonderful to have people coming on site and participating in that community. That's quite a lot of questions, really, isn't it? Yeah. And I think for me, um, to come and be inspired, to come and be inspired by all of the amazing speakers, all of the new technology the exhibitors are showcasing, to be inspired by their peers, to collaborate. I, I mean, it, like, this is the first time I'll be doing this event, and it's so exciting. And I can just, you know, I can feel the momentum sort of gaining and, um, yeah, so I just I just think it's a wonderful opportunity to come under one roof over three days and have access to just so much, so many amazing speakers and resources and um, yeah, people. Yep, from from tactical workshops to uh, strategic tactics and, and planning and and uh, leadership to community, um, it, it's all in there, all in there. And I'm excited to, to be there with the community as well and to have even more conversations uh, from the floor and, and to meet folks. See you again, Nicole, and to, uh, to meet you, Julia. We'll be there, what is it, the 20th to the 22nd of June in uh, Excel London in the Docklands. Uh, looks like a beautiful spot in general. Uh, to, to hang out and, and enjoy coffee and ice cream and all the other goodness that's going to happen there as well. So good stuff, Marco. You, I'm, I'm going to start blowing up my floaties. No, I was going to tell you that uh, I, yeah. I really want to be there. So we start, we need to start looking at the flights and uh, I'm not swimming. It's uh, taking uh, really no, too much no. time. Or too, no, not really. <laughs> Not, not yeah. even if I land in Paris, I'm gonna. I'm not even swim through that little piece of uh, <laughs> the channel. Of ocean, not even the channel. No, no. I'm just gonna fly there. I'm gonna look for a place to stay, and I'm very excited. One thing we didn't mention is that because of this, you know, few years that we didn't show up there, we we have a lot of friends in that area. I can start naming now and finish in an hour, so I'm not gonna start it, but. 
people in the UK, people from Italy, people from other part of Europe. I know I'm going to see a lot of them. And going back, yes, it's technology, but it's people. So I want to invite everybody to not only those that can to, to go there, meet us there, meet Nicole, Julia, and, the, and all the community, but also listen to our conversation that we're going to have before we actually go there, the one that we're going to have there. There is a dedicated page on ITSP Magazine for the event with news already. And every time we produce a piece of content like this one, it's going to go there. So stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, be sure to check out InfoSecurity uh, Europe 2023. There is something for, sounds to me, for everybody. So thank you very much, Nicole, Julia. We're really looking forward to meet you in person. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you again. Thank you, Marco. And thank you, Sean. Uh, thank you much. See you, everybody. <laughs>